Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red Game to the Com video, we have an amalgamation of AMD news. This primarily focuses, once again, of course, on AMD's Vega architecture, as well as Ryzen. Topics include, but certainly not limited to, the fact that Ryzen is not going to be a TikTok strategy. Indeed, this architecture is going to be around for about four years, and according to AMD, is going to be tock, tock, tock. And the fact that the 500 series, at least some of them for the mobile, is confirmed to be rebrands of the 400 series. And we have a bit more information on that, but we'll go into it bit by bit. We're going to start out with Ryzen, simply because we're going alphabetically, and R, at least according to my alphabet, goes before uh, V. So I guess we should start. <clears throat> now, as we're all aware... Ryzen is going to be released in the first quarter of this year. AMD have confirmed it is not a paper launch, and as we confirmed yesterday as well, there is not just going to be the 8-core 16-thread model available on launch. There is going to be a multitude of processors, which we can assume is going to be both the 4 and the 6 alongside the 8. I don't think they're going to drop all the way down to a dual uh, core with four threads, which obviously is SMT. I guess it's possible, but I highly doubt it because they are making an awful lot of noise regarding the um, multi-core efficiency and multi-core design of Ryzen. On the other hand, it's possible, I guess, with uh, OEMs that they may decide to go that route, and it certainly would help if one of the four cores on the CCX, that is compute, that is the, the CPU complex, I almost screwed that up there, in fact I did slightly, um, has one defective core, so they could go, for example, a triple or a dual core route. But the leaks are that there is going to be a quad, a six, and a eight core. Anyway, getting that over and done with, what AMD have confirmed, however, is that there is going to be a very aggressive plan in putting out successive versions of Ryzen. So the older guard of Intel would tell you that TikTok was their strategy. Now it is, of course, process optimize and architecture, whereas previously it was TikTok. The purpose, however, of AMD, or sorry, the belief of AMD with uh, Zen, is it's going to be, quote, tock, tock, tock. What that means is, well, there's going to be very aggressive improvements per Ryzen release. Now, that, of course, means that if, for example, and I'm not saying they will, but if AMD decides to release a new version of Ryzen every two years or every 18 months or whatever their schedule is, obviously, I don't know. They have confirmed there's going to be a Zen Plus, but no other details other than there is going to be a Zen Plus, which I guess is now going to be Ryzen Plus, technically. It is going to have significant chaining changes, meaningful changes. So it's not just going to be perhaps a small clock speed increase or perhaps power efficiency, but instead there is going to be numerous performance enhancements. And that's going to be very interesting because obviously KB Lake, there is definitely some changes with KB Lake, the fact that it overclocks like a demon, but it has been rather disappointing in terms of IPC games. And quite frankly, it's probably had quite a mixed reception with enthusiasts. So the other way to look at this is that AMD are most likely already working not just on the final design of Ryzen, in other words, bringing up the product, figuring out what clock speeds to ship for retail, although supposedly that is going to be 4 gigahertz, as we discussed a few days ago, um, and just basically putting the finishing touches to perhaps BIOSes and whatever else they're doing, but also working on a complete redesign. Remember, the tape out for processors is not like, you know, two days. It takes a long time for a processor to actually be changed. So what they'll probably do is with each successive version, they'll do like teardowns, they'll figure out, okay, what went wrong, what could we improve, what meaningful changes could we make, and it's also somewhat prediction. What I mean by prediction is, no, not branch prediction in code, but actually figuring out what developers, what programmers, what game designers, what um, various applications will be using, what their actual code base is going to be doing. For example, is code going to become more oh, I don't know, integer heavy? 
or perhaps more floating point uh, or perhaps more AVX instructions. Perhaps they figure that they need to increase the cache or perhaps they need uh, just higher clock speed or focus primarily on uh, single core performance because perhaps that's been uh, <coughs> excuse me, a weakness on the previous architecture. And I'm just using this as general terms, not necessarily for Ryzen. In other words, it's going to take a while. And we can assume, therefore, that AMD are going to want to be rather aggressive over this, over the next couple of years. Okay, so now we're on to the confusing part of this video. I say confusing because there are multiple possibilities um, based upon conjecture and rumour because there is a fact which is rather interesting. Okay, if that confused you, wait until you actually hear it. So the 500 series has been confirmed, both the 560 and the 570, to be rebrands of the 400 series with just a step up in their name. So for example, the 460 is the 560 and the 570 is the 470 for mobility. I want to focus and stress that word mobility for so for laptops. Now what happened is that a notebook was shown. This is a Samsung notebook, the Odyssey series of notebooks, that was listing options of either the GTX 1070 or the RX 570 with either 8 or 4 gigabyte RAM configurations. And a Reddit user confirmed, talking to AMD reps, when I quote, the card is an OEM version of the 470. I asked an AMD rep at their booth about it. The 500 series is an OEM series, just like how the 8000 series was to the 7000 series. Okay, so that part is clear. So that means there are multiple questions that we're left with. First of all, what is the relationship between the 500 series with the desktop versus the mobile? And allow me to demonstrate what I mean here. The 8000 series was both for desktop and for laptops. So we know that, but that leaves us, that leaves us, excuse me, with a very interesting question. Is the OEM side of things and the retail things going to tie up when it comes to the desktop? Or is there going to be a difference? Now, what I mean by that is, does that mean, therefore, that the desktop version of the current 400 series is going to remain as 400 and we as retail customers are going to get the 400 series for the foreseeable future or does that mean it's going to tick over to the 500 series and also that means what is the relationship between Polaris and what is the relationship between Vega so there were rumors that Vega 11 is going to act as a essentially re relaunch of the Polaris lineup. It's going to act as a replacement. But it's possible that Polaris um, but Polaris 10, for example, is going to stop and then there's going to be Vega 11 and then Vega 10 is going to operate in the top end. Quite frankly, there's just not enough information at the moment and there's a lot of speculation and theories and it possibly could be cleared up by tomorrow on what the actual answer is. There also has been a few questions from viewers regarding the high-end card that was shown off at the um, CES event. Now, quite frankly, we do know it's got HBM2 memory, and we know that that's up to a configuration of 16 gigabytes. But Raja Kadori did mention, by accident, it was a slip, and we covered this just yesterday, that there is a possibility that the high-end card is not the final high-end card that the retail customers are going to see. Therefore, it's possible that the final version is going to have higher clock speeds, more amounts of compute units enabled. Now, we do know that the full the full version of Vega 10 is going to have 64 compute units, or at least that's the theoretical maximum that it could have. We do not know how many of those were enabled for the version we're seeing running all these Doom demos. Nor do we know what the state of the drivers are now. The early reports were the drivers were kind of crap uh, for event, uh, sorry, New Horizon. But supposedly they've improved a little bit. But how much, we just don't know. And the final thing is, what are the clock speeds of these cards? And um, a few people have asked me, well, what do I think? Honestly, I don't think there's enough information. I personally 
would be shocked if the high-end Vega part was only as fast as the GTX 1080. I would be very surprised. And it's not because, you know, yay AMD, but it's just like, it's just how it is. It's like they've had a year to improve the architecture, so frankly, if this card is only as fast as the GTX 1080, I would actually be a little bit disappointed. Now, Raja Kodori did admit that Vulcan is helping that particular card, um, and he said that DirectX 11, oh, sorry, OpenGL, it might be a different story. He still believes that the Vega card shown off would beat it, but he didn't flat out say that it would ruffle stomp it, whereas the Vega card that's shown off in, uh, using Vulcan is definitely quite a bit ahead, even of an overclocked GTX 1080. Or there's a possibility that AMD have been deliberately holding back the performance of the card. I think there's just too many variables at the moment. That's just my opinion. There is a lot of information, however, that has been unveiled over the past several days over CES 2017. And I will be putting it all together in a video. So hopefully you'll stick around. But with that all said, take care of yourselves and bye for now.